The Terra Dome. I the. To hell, motherfuckers. What's your favorite scary? That always is my favorite part from that movie, by the way. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so after we just welcomed you guys to hell, you know it's your boy, Walter Doom. I am back for another episode of Let's Talk About Horror, the horror podcast, the ghetto horror podcast, where we talk about any and everything related to the genre. And yeah, boy, we got a like a nice show for you for you guys today. I'm going to be talking about a couple of things, a couple of news reports that I've heard over the week, or a couple of weeks, I should say. Some old, some new. Hey, fuck it, whatever. You guys take it however. Also, we're going to be talking about the movie The Marshes. And I got you guys' this must-watch movie of the week and the meme of the week. So yeah, you guys just sit back, relax, get some snacks. And just enjoy the show. Cue them applause for me real quick one time. And I will be right back. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Alright, let's cut them applause off real quick. Oh, you keep them on. You know they should go. <laughs> Alright, you guys, I'm back. Back for another week. I know you guys miss me. I know I miss all five of you guys too. But anyway, I'm sitting here chilling today as we are about to talk about some news for you guys. Well, I'm about to talk about some news for you guys. I'm sitting back watching this Laker game. And man, I mean, we are really coming back on the 76ers ass right now. I mean, currently right now, while I am recording, the score is like 48-56. They just or the 76ers, by the way. 76ers are in the league. Lakers are, have the 48, by the way. Um, and I just got to admit, like, I am just really impressed on how my team has been really performing as of late. I mean, considering that last year that the Lakers were pretty much out of the playoffs last year. And by the way, I mean, if you can't tell already, I am a Lakers fan. <laughs> I mean, you guys should know this already coming from Los Angeles. So, yeah. Um, But anyway, yeah. Um, It's amazing from what my team has been producing as of late. Um, I am kind of like one of those people that are sad that the young core has went away to New Orleans and trade for Anthony Davis, which I felt like we could have gotten him anyway. He would have signed with us anyway. Once his contract ran out like this, well, this upcoming offseason. But I see what they're trying to do. It is a must now, must now win situation. Um, we A lot of teams are not that powerhouse like the season before with the Golden State Warriors having like KD, Steph, and Clay and all that. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking like it's a little, it's a more, it's a little more balanced. I mean, even with Kawhi going to the team like the Clippers, it's a little bit more balanced because even they are not doing all that red hot themselves. But that's just a moment I wanted to take while like letting you guys know what I'm doing at the moment while recording this podcast. <laughs> Some of you guys are probably like, what the fuck, basketball? I don't give a fuck about basketball. Talk about horror. Well, you are right, you guys. And Chucky, what are they probably thinking while I'm talking about sports right now? What are you fucking nuts? Yeah, so let's cut the bullshit about sports right now. (laughs) Because I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of you guys are saying right now. And we are going to talk about, in our first segment which I am now deeming at the moment is tentatively 
being called this, but internet news, internet, <laughs> internet. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I'm thinking of new ways of trying to spice up this show and all that. And yeah, we got a new segment. So yeah, this is going to be internet news. And I am going to be still doing the same thing like I've done before. It's just talk about the news. So instead of saying like, hey, we're going to go to the news. You know, we're going to have like a segment just called internet news. Kind of like how I have Bird Box or Nah, which is going to be talking about the marshes today. I am going to do that segment. So you guys are going to see whether you're going to Bird Box or not Bird Box, the movie The Marshes that I'm going to be talking about later on in the seg in the, not the segment, but the podcast. But without further ado, let's get to internet news. All right, so in our first order of news today, we have some news about the new Saw movie that is coming out in a couple of months. So just to recap about what's happening, we know Chris Rock is right now creating a new Saw fran well Saw movie, not franchise movie, but a new Saw movie for the franchise which was tentatively named The Organ Donor. Jumping on as director is Darren Lynn Bowsman, who was involved directing the past couple of Saw movies, which was Saw 2, II, Saw 3, and Saw 4, which in my opinion were one of the best movies that Saw has ever been, really, besides the first movie. I mean, like, besides the first one, 2, 3, 4... Somewhat five were good. Six, okay. Seven, no, not so much. And I've oh, and I've been harping about this for the longest on how Saw 3D just spent more time trying to be a movie about just the 3D effect and just trying to cash cow on like the simple fact 3D was out and everybody was just into 3D movies. They made a total shitty movie with the 3D effects and everything. But besides that, the other films are good. Jigsaw, terrible. I really thought Jigsaw was a really terrible movie. And again, I am I on record as to stating that, and it stays consistent. I haven't changed my mind yet. Jigsaw is still a piece of shit movie that I just felt like, why... Why? Just why? <laughs> it was really just a why. Why come up with this shit? But anyway, moving on. Josh Stolberg, who wrote the Jigsaw movie, is writing this screenplay also with Peter Goldfinger. And it does bring a bit of worry for me because, again, I did not like Jigsaw. I did not like the story of Jigsaw and just how, like, the movie was this doctor who was basically trying to keep the Jigsaw name alive and all that. And he was pretty much doing things that I was expecting more Dr. Gordon to do than him, honestly. And it was just weird because it was like, I was thinking like, okay, maybe Dr. Gordon is going to appear in this film, but I'm kind of like what this current Saw movie, which I'm about to talk about in a minute, Jigsaw was kind of like not really in the same rail or a continuation from the past Saw universes. And I mean, I guess that's why it was pretty bad because they were trying to do a new story that just wasn't executed right. As far as stars that we know for this film, we know that Chris Rock is going to star in this film. Samuel L. Jackson is going to play his father in the film. Also in the film is Max Mangella, who is on The Hands Maze Tale. I've been wanting to watch that show on Hulu for the longest, but never got around to it. And also Maricel Nichols from Riverdale is on the film. Their roles is not really specified what it's what they're going to be in the film, but we just know that they're going to be in this film. I think Marisol, her her role is actually specified that she's gonna play like a I think a police chief in the film. So that one is actually really specified. As we know, Chris Rock, he's playing a lead detective. Samuel L. Jackson, like I mentioned earlier, is playing his dad. And I think Max, he's supposed to be the partner of Chris Rock, I believe. But other than that, I mean, there's no other roles that are being specified in this film. 
So as far as the news right now, as we all know, the film is supposed to drop in May 15th of this year. Um, but what we learned today in recent news is that a possible title has been put out for, for the movie. So the title right now, what it sounds like is that the movie is going to be called Spiral, The Book of Saw. And not only were just like the title of the movie came out, there was also like different screenshots of what was, I guess, supposed to be in the film, like little shots of each scene that's happening in the movie. We get shots of Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson. Um, but no, other than that, no other like details was was released. No plot points or story or any other character release was talked about in the little expose or news about this film. Um, a lot of theories are about this movie right now, about what it possibly could be about based on just the title alone, which is called Spiral, the Book of Saw. And when I was watching this video by 3C Film Review, his analysis about the movie is possibly about Maybe the story is about someone copying the killings of John Kramer. Now, in my past experience dealing with 3C Film Review, um, I watched his channel for the um, details about the Child's Play movie. And he wasn't too off base with everything that he found out about this movie. I really thought it was a really good analysis that he made. But as far as like this film, they've been really tight knit and really lip tight. I said tight knit, lip tight actually. <laughs> or tight lip about what this movie is about. So we don't really know. We still don't know whether this movie is going to be a reboot or a remake or a sequel or anything like that. But what is being actually talked about, like I mentioned earlier, and this is just a little bit of detail that we did get, was that this film is not really a direct sequel or any kind of way, fashion, or form, but kind of a reboot. Because not only is this going to be like a new Saw universe, per se, it's going to be like, it's going to be in continuity with all the other Saw movies. And that's pretty much like all that they've released about this film. I personally, like I mentioned before, I'm a huge Saw fan and besides Scream, this will be probably like first or second because Scream and Saw go interchangeably for me. I really do like both films, franchises, equally really. And I, all I'm doing is wishing the best for Saw once it comes out. That is not going to be a total bombshell because it is a, going to probably be a little bit different. And it is going to have a bit of comedy, according to Chris Rock. But he says the comedy is not going to be excessive. It's going to be in a timely, sprinkled, a bit fashion. Which I'm hoping all the comedic moments do come at the right time. You know, I'm hoping that it's not like any of the Child's Play films where like... Well, not really the Child's Play films, but more like the Chucky movies. I should say. We're like in the Bride of Chucky and the Seed of Chucky. It was just excessive jokes in the film. Sometimes they hit, sometimes they fell flat. And I'm just hoping that this movie doesn't embody too much comedy because when we think of Saw, we don't think of comedy. We think of just gory, gruesome, gritty violence. And that's what I really want for my Saw film. I want that grit and grind and disgust. I mean, it's like Saw is not a pretty movie. 
It's pretty with the violence, <laughs> if you love gory films. But it's not a pretty movie. You know, just like with Hostel. Hostel is not a pretty movie at all. It's very disturbing, sick, and disgusting. And kind of highlights the point about certain issues in the world. Like in the, in the second Hostel film where, like, it was about trafficking in the black market. Well, not really trafficking, but more about, like, kidnapping in the black market. You know... What we're kind of expecting from Saw is kind of like the grit that it usually brings. So, yeah, I mean, that's all I could really say about the Saw film. So, moving on, let's go on to our next segment. So, recently, the Child's Play TV show has now been officially announced to be on Sci-Fi. Now, we knew this about this TV show for the longest since, like, maybe last year when they were talking about the remake child's play movie that was coming out but now we officially have announcement that the show child's play which is now deemed chucky <laughs> right i mean damn but yeah it's now deemed chucky is now officially going to come on sci-fi and they have been greenlit to start their episodes so as you guys know or should know, or if you don't know, Don Mancini and Brad Dourif are coming back, teaming up together, and they are now about to bring the Child's Play universe, or the Chucky universe, I should say, onto the small screen. Don Mancini before has said that he's been trying to do this before for the longest, but he's still, he's not abandoning any of the Chucky movies. He's just trying to expand on his universe and try and take Chucky to places that he never really took before. For those that have been keeping up with the Chucky movies, if you have seen The Cult of Chucky, we all know that it ends on a big cliffhanger where our old friend Andy, played by Alex Vincent, is caught in an insane asylum with a bunch of dead people and dead Chucky dolls. And I really do have to put the quotation of marks around dead dolls because no one's going to believe like a bunch of dolls were alive and killed people. But they will believe Andy did that shit. <laughs> I gotta say, The Cult of Chucky is definitely an underrated film if you have never seen it before. And so does The Curse of Chucky. I mean, it really does bring back that old feeling of Chucky from the Child's Play franchise where he was just more terrifying than just comedic relief. And he does bring a bit of that comedic relief in the cult of Chucky, but it is in a more fucked up world <laughs> than, than like the, the fucking um, other Chucky movies. Where they were more campy and lighthearted and goofy and what have you. But anyway, moving on, um, because I am just rambling at this moment. Um, reported earlier, Fiona Dorif and Jennifer Tilly, they've mentioned that they will have some involvement in the show, but they are not prominent characters for the show. And that's because Don Mancini wants to kind of like venture out into different worlds with Chucky and kind of like have him involved with different families besides the ones dealing with like the Pierce family or the Barclays family. He really wants to go and kind of venture out a little bit more. My thing about the new Chucky TV show is that how well will these characters fit within the Chucky universe because I feel like sometimes when you start bringing in too many characters it's like with Saul going back to Saul it's like with John Kramer he had so many apprentices some didn't even know about each other honestly I mean in a way can you say like John Kramer kind of created a cult in a way but even if he did create a cult these people should be more aware of each other but they weren't but he had all these apprentices. I mean, he had Dr. Gordon, who was his apprentice, which we didn't even know, but we kind of did 
figure out he would be in some way involved later on after the Saw 7 film. We also knew that Amanda, she was one of his apprentices also. And then later we found out about Detective Hoffman. He was one of his apprentices also later on in Saw 4. And they pretty much knew about each other. But then we had Jigsaw and yeah, it was like another one. And it just started getting a bit absurd from there. Well, I mean, after that, I mean, there was no other Saw movies after that <laughs> until this Chris Rock one comes out. And we'll see how that one plays out. But what I'm saying is like all those apprentices. Oh, yeah. And I can't forget Zepp. He was also kind of an apprentice, if you think about it. He was running around helping Jigsaw. And that's also another thing that I kind of forgot to mention is that there's a possible Zep reference in this new Chris Rock movie. So who knows what universe or what timeline this Saw movie is supposed to take place. And also that's the thing with this new Chucky TV show. Where is this timeline supposed to take place? What kind of characters are we dealing with? And how, and what character, or what um, child's play film or world are we following? I guess, like, with Chucky in this TV show. So that's just a bit of concern because, I mean, yeah, we all, some of us, we all love Chucky. Some of us don't. And I could kind of see this end up being in like a really goofy or not so well executed manner, in my opinion. But um, it does sound dope. I mean, I wish they'd do more Chucky movies because I am really thirsty to find out what the fuck is going to happen after the cult. <laughs> Seriously. But... That's just one concern. And also another concern that I have is how free are they going to be with Chucky? Because I'd rather it came on like a streaming service like Hulu or Netflix. So that way they have complete freedom to do whatever the fuck they want. Honestly. But with this one, they're probably not going to have that much freedom. I mean, supposedly they are going to have freedom because sci-fi is kind of known for letting a little bit more risque shows on their network. So Chucky will probably be free to say fuck and all the all the things he wanna say freely and everything. But I mean at the end of the day, it's still a TV show and a TV network, and TV networks do have like rules and regulations, so I don't know. We'll see what happens when this comes out. But there is no official date time when this show is supposed to come out. But I will definitely keep an eye out for when this show is going to come out. Moving on, let's talk about Three From Hell. It's supposed to hit Shudder in February 13th of this year. A day before fucking valentine's day and boy oh boy for me it's just single awareness day but it's gonna be a fun single awareness day for me because i am going to sit back drink tequila and watch three from hell <laughs> oh man but not only that we have nightmare on elm street the 2010 film coming out on netflix February 1st, Polaroid, which was a long shelved film um, by Lars Klevberg, the guy that did Child's Play movie, that's supposed to drop February 11th, also on Netflix. And the thing about that, it's like, I don't know whether that film is going to be good or not because it's been long shelved and things that have been long shelved. They got their reasons why the company long shelved that film. <laughs> Besides that movie, Girl on a Third Floor, which is starring CM Punk, 
that comes out February 22nd. So I gotta say, February already sounds like a real action pack of movies that are coming out. I really cannot wait to watch Three from Hell. I'm gonna be sitting there, hopefully not crying when I see Sid Haig in the film. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I don't really cry to movies. I mean, there's some movies that get to me, but there's not a lot of movies that really get to me. I mean, I wasn't one to cry when Simba's dad died. I even laughed, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but I laughed when Simba's dad died in the new Lion King film. <laughs> I just thought it was fucking hilarious how he just tumbled over the rocks and shit like that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was just me that found that funny. And even when the animated movie was there, I didn't cry to that shit either. I don't know. It just didn't affect me in any way. It didn't move me. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so sad. I'm so sad that Simba Loss is dead. Oh my god. I don't know what to do. Uh, and I'm just like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> it's a goddamn movie. <laughs> oh man. I real I'm really just I didn't care. I really did not care at all. It didn't really affect me in any way or form. Oh god damn. I just turned around to look at the Lakers game. We are getting our ass kicked. <laughs> Oh, man, it's now a 20-point deficit. Lakers 52, 76 or 72. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but that's that bullshit. But anyway, yeah. I can't wait till 3 from Hell comes on. I've been wanting to watch that movie for the longest. I actually wanted to go to their, um, their one-week premiere. But I never really got a chance to go because of, I guess, circumstances. <laughs> I don't really remember. I think it was work and all that. And I just had, like, too much shit going on. But, yeah, I really wanted to go check out the movie. And I wanted to go to the one where they were doing the double feature of Devil's Reject. Because this was before I actually bought the film and actually watched it. I wanted to watch Devil's Reject. And see what that one was about. And then after that you were going to see Three From Hell. As the double feature. And honestly that. I, I felt like that was worth every dollar cent of my money that I could pay for. But maybe next time. I mean when there's like another film. I'm just, <laughs> it's not going to be a next time for like you know. This, this universe. But maybe next time with like some other film if they got like something big going on and I'll check it out but moving on this is gonna be pretty much the last bit of news that I'm going to talk about and then we'll get on to Bird Box or not nah. but Don't Breathe 2 is going to be a real thing for all you Don't Breathe fans I've watched that movie like I mentioned if you guys watch my bargain bin collection um you guys know that i actually bought that film because i wanted to see it for the longest and never did but for you guys that haven't seen this film or know what this film about this is about a film about a bunch of thieves trying to rob this helpless blind man but they end up finding out this helpless blind man is not so helpless after all <laughs> during this time of like them being hunted down by this blind man, they eventually stumble onto like a big secret that this guy has been keeping for the longest. And it's, it gets pretty dark, actually. It's a really dark twist that you see in this film. I mean, because at first I was sitting there like, damn, why are they going to do this to this blind man? Like, what the fuck, bro? That's fucked up. <laughs> but... After you go through like so much of the film and wasn't it got deeper and deeper into it. And then when I found out the secret, I was like, oh shit. I don't know who to cheer for now. 
Oh, man. As you know, Jane Levy, she stars in that film. And if you guys listen to this podcast, you know I'm always talking about some starlet that is always hot. And, yeah, I always watch, like, Suburgatory just because of Jane Levy. (laughs) I mean, I got to say, she was, like, and this was, like, the time where redheads were kind of, like, a thing. Like, there was, like, maybe a couple of redheads out there. Like, she was a redhead. Lindsay Lohan was a redhead. And then Emma Stone. I felt like Emma Stone, they were trying to make her, like, the new Lindsay. But she ended up carving her own way and what have you. Which I like better for her because she could actually act. <laughs> you know, Lindsay Lohan was just hot during that time before you know all the drugs and shit i mean in my opinion she's still kind of hot now but she's kind of (laughs) crazy she's kind of crazy bro you know and that's that's just because of drugs (laughs) but yeah jane like she's hot but for this don't breathe too movie apparently um roto sayaguess who was the co-writer of the first movie and the evil dead. He is now set to be the director for the sequel. According to THR, um, the, he's not only going to direct, but the film is also going into production in April. And Fede Alvarez, who was the first director of this film of the first film, He is now going to be around doing writing duties and production duties for for the movie. And he's also writing the movie with Saya Guest. So my thing is, because there's not much info that I want that is being put out there about this film. Um, I want to know if they're still continuing the same storyline. You know, are we going to find out? what happens to Jane Levy's character after her encounter with the blind man. Because the blind man, I hear, is he's going to still be a part of this movie. He is going to be part of the sequel. So I like that they're keeping the continuity with the characters. And sometimes, I don't know, because he looks a bit older, and sometimes I kind of feel worried. I mean, because considering what happened to Sid Haig and what have you. Um... Yeah, it's just like, I hope this guy makes it through this film. <laughs> That's just my thought right now. But, um, yeah, knowing that, um, are we going to get introduced to some new characters in this film? And what have you, you know, are we going to have a new story, new universe of characters? Who knows? But I'm excited to see this happening I can't wait to see it. If you guys are Don't Breathe fans, you guys should be excited too. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. (laughs) But anyway, I'm going to take a break right now, you guys. And when I come back, I'm going to bring Bird Box or Nah about the movie The Marshes, which is our first 2020 film of the year. Well, not really first 2020 film, but it's one of my first 2020 horror films that I've watched for this year. But yeah, I'll be right back, you guys. What's your favorite scary movie? And we are back, you guys, and welcome to our segment of Bird Box or Nah. So for you guys that are regularly familiar with listening to me, you guys already know what the deal is, but for you guys that just so happen to stumble upon this podcast... Here are a few things you need to know. So if you guys are familiar with the movie Bird Box, as we all should be familiar with it, considering that it was the biggest watch movie, or should I say the biggest piece of shit movie watched on Netflix of 2018. And because of the overly hyped but yet hilarious Bird Box challenge, We should all know to bird box something, you are covering your eyes and you are not seeing shit. So, when I say to bird box something, I mean cover your fucking eyes. Because this movie is fucking terrible. 
So if you have to bird box something, you will hear this sample clip right here. Listen to me. I'm only going to say this once. Under no circumstance are you allowed to take off your blindfold. Okay, take your Do not take your blindfolds off. Do not. But if the movie is actually really good and it is worth the watch, maybe it's maybe not your cup of tea or maybe you're not used to like weird films that I usually like to watch. But if it's a good movie, it will be accompanied by this symbol, which means to watch the film. So you won't need to bird box if you hear this. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Gary, no. no. please don't do this. Show the baby. Show the baby. No, 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 Olivia. You're just so bad. So you guys got it? Got it? Good. So the first movie in the Bird Box or Nas segment of 2020, we're going to be talking about The Marshes. And it's a movie that is on Shudder right now. It's a, I don't want to say it's like a psychological horror, but it's kind of like a, almost like a psychological horror, <laughs> but like a creature feature, maybe. I don't know what the fuck they want to call this film, really, anyway. But it's about these scientists from a university who are collecting scientific samples because they are aquatic economists or whatever, economists or ecosystems, whatever the fuck they want to call themselves. And they are collecting samples for this university project or whatever it is. It's not really specified why they, why they are collecting these samples. But while they are out in the marshes or out in the woods or whatever they're at, they are, they come encounter with these hunters who are just straight up hicks, rednecks or whatever, whatever you want to call them. And they go with this bit of tug of war with them throughout the film. But what ends up happening is that they are not the clear enemies throughout the film. Actually, this entity called the Swagman is actually really the real villain of the film and he's pretty much a guy that was caught raping a squatter's wife and what have you so the squatter and a police officer pretty much took their revenge on this guy and drowned him in the marshes but the thing is with the squatter he didn't say like the guy raped his wife he just said like the guy stole his goat or what have you and I guess that's like a big crime or what have you, than rape. <laughs> but um, they do definitely go after this guy and kill him in the marshes. And I guess whoever enters the marshes will be killed by this entity man who is basically feeding on these people whenever he kills them. Um, the things that I want to talk about, and it's kind of like how I'm usually ranking the Into the Dark series, so I felt like this year, um, because maybe sometimes my rankings are a little random to some people, maybe, um, I felt like this year I should do more of a number rank or a point system for my 2020 movies, and... Mm -hmm. It would kind of help me kind of like whenever I'm talking about a film kind of helps me rank them out even more in a little bit faster than how I did last year for when I was watching all those 2020 films. Well, not 2020 films, but all the 2019 films. I feel like I'm already trying to hit 2021 already, but all the 2019 films and just how I was ranking them. So yeah, so without further ado, we're going to talk about a few things. I'm going to be talking about story, plot, characters, acting. And by the way, story and plot, they're looped into one. Characters, acting is looped into one. Cinematography and aesthetics is also looped into one. And the gore and terror for this film. Um, I'm not going to share too much details about the scores and what have you. Because I just feel like I want to point out the main points about these, about the film and why they are, well, what what I felt, the reason why it's 
as bad or is as good as it is. So let's go ahead and jump into story and plot. Um, after learning about the story and plot of this film, I had to actually watch this movie twice to really fully get what it was about. Um, honestly speaking, too many things was just like not really specific and it was very unreasonable or unfulfilling. I felt like there was just too many like random conflicts that happened. One was Ben and Priya who are the main characters of the film and they are two scientists who are trying to fight over this promotion which I put in quotation marks because I really don't know what they're fighting for or a candidate for. It's not really specified. We just hear in a conversation with Priya and another girl who was never really identified. And they say like, oh, well, I heard it's between you and Ben. So when do you find out or some shit like that? And at first, when I first watched this movie, I thought Ben and Priya were in a relationship together, but they really not. They're just colleagues I see and it was just like they were both dueling out for whatever position that they're trying to duel it out for in this university as well as they're taking this undergrad with them on this trip which again is not supposed to be dangerous it's just supposed to be a simple trip of going out to the marshes and collecting samples for like a couple of days and head back two was an, another random conflict was just between the hunters and the the scientists well basically the hunters and Priya now to me I feel like maybe the Hicks because honestly that's how they're referred to throughout the film most of the time are just straight up Hicks but to me it seemed like the hunters had like a preconceived notion about the scientists, but it was so dumb because uh, when I found out, because I didn't know what their job entailed, but what I found out about an, about an, an aquatic economist or ecosystem, I keep saying economist, <laughs> I don't know why I want to say economist so much, but um, an aquatic ecosystem scientist, they usually just collect water for like the benefit of seeing how good the water is and to detect like different um, temperature changes or world changes and possible like I guess tornadoes or some shit like that but what they're doing is really just helpful for the environment and not only that they were also it's also helping like the animals that are around that area that these hunters are trying to hunt down but apparently they're trying to say like these hunters don't like these scientists because they're taking away the water away from the farmers and drying up all the land just to feed to their froggies. And that's literally the analogy that the Hicks are using in this film. And I just thought it was very random. I mean, I could understand there's a preconceived notion and hate already within these characters. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay is that this conflict just seems very unreasonable and very random at most. Not only did that was that random, but also the swag man, him just hunting down every character that comes around his swamp. And we got to put an emphasis in quotation marks of his swamp because technically it wasn't really his swamp to begin with. I mean, a swagman, which I found out is just basically a transient who travels all over the place. That's it. He doesn't own shit. He's basically a bum. So I don't get why this guy who dies in the marshes, all of a sudden is just like, I am going to kill everybody in this motherfucker that comes here. To me, it just seems like it's very random and it just doesn't come off like any good motivation for him to actually kill these characters at all, it, just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense to me at all. What also wasn't good for me was that just the story flow of things, the flow and pace, it just wasn't good at all. It just came off as very mundane. And it has nothing to do with them being like, 
I guess, from Australia or New Zealand or what have you. I mean, they were from down south, like in that Australia region. Um, I have no problem with foreign films. I do like foreign films. Sometimes the foreign films come off better than the Americanized films. But this one was just not that great because too many things seemed like it was kind of like an insider knowledge about what was going on in the country and the conflict between these two parties. And sometimes the lines and words were just not even like understandable, really. It was very indistinctive, basically. And even with the caption being on, it just was like, what the fuck did they just say? <laughs> Um, also the ending to this film, which I'm not going to tell you guys because it's not really worth noting. And if you want to watch it, you can watch it for yourself. It's on Shudder. Um, but the ending wasn't really that good. It was definitely, um, a dumb ending because at the end, well, actually I just said, like, I'm not going to mention the ending. <laughs> But the direction of the story also was another thing that was bad with the film as far as the story and plot. Because it just comes off as very misleading. Now, I get like they're trying to make this whole story about the swag man killing everybody. They want to make a monster or a boogeyman per se. But at the same time, it just seemed very random and misleading on where the story was going because I felt like the story was about to take us in the direction of the hunters, which I felt like would have made a more interesting story at that, that the hunters were going to be the ones, ideally the ones we have to watch out in the film. But it turned out to be this whole fucking entity that just, you know, is out there feeding on people and killing on them just because he's a wild animal. I don't know. As bad as the story and plot were, the characters were just equally were bad. I did not like Priya at all. And she was definitely like one of the worst characters in the film, along with the other host of characters that were also very unlikable. Priya, for one, she just always came off as too smart and too confrontational. One, I mean, I get, like, when she first encountered the Hicks, she had no problem with them, but the guy was being a dick, and he scared her a bit, and just was, like, coming off very confrontational of her, but she didn't have to really get confrontational back with them, knowing that these motherfuckers is kind of crazy. So we see the Priya heading out with Will, who is the undergrad student, and they encounter the fucking Hicks, and... They see them in an area that is supposed to be reserved for only the people who work at the university only and not for the public. And they need to get a permit in order to be there. And what happened is that Priya was being very confrontational about them not having a permit, even though those people said they did. But we all know they didn't have that shit. I mean, you know how fucked up people are. They didn't have a permit at all. <laughs> they were just hunting just to be hunting, which was also very illegal to do in that area. So she gets all up in the face of these crazy hunters and all that and takes their picture. Later on in the film, she's pretty much getting drunk with Ben and Will and goes to bed. She claims that she saw something and heard something, which she does throughout this film that you see. She kind of hears and sees things. Not only when she's awake, but when she's asleep at night. But she wakes up in the morning and standing over in the fireplace is Ben and Will. And they're looking at a pig's head that was left by the hunters. And Ben is just pretty much being a dick saying like, well, here goes a clear example of your people's skills and what have you, which is like, wow. <laughs> I mean, you guys could have been stabbed in your sleep, but obviously these people weren't that crazy. They weren't going to do something that was going to get them arrested, obviously. But anyway, it was just very confrontational how she just escalated that situation with these crazy people. And 
not only that, it just led to this whole, like, combative area where it just seemed like she just could not stop fighting with people. Because even then, she was fighting with Ben and arguing with him about his fucking samples. And not only that, she was being a nosy bitch at that, too. <laughs> like, she literally went through Ben's stuff and was looking through his things and seeing, like, what he had to do as far as his objective. And, yeah, I mean, Ben, he was kind of bullshitting himself. But it was like, come on now. Really do. <laughs> but not only that, it was also dumb that she didn't want to call the police or the university or anybody at that after their camp was violated, which I also thought was just very dumb of her to even do because no normal person would just be like, well, I mean, yeah, they fucked up our stuff. They left the pig's head. They stole my shit. But... It's okay, because I think it's all going to pass away anyway. Like, who the fuck really thinks like that? I know I wasn't thinking like that. I was like, damn it, these motherfuckers wanted to kill you guys. They would have killed you. But that's just me. <laughs> but staying on the topic about the Hunter slash Hicks, I didn't really think they were necessary. I really honestly think for a movie that was turned around from being a conflict between the scientists and the Hicks turned out to be this entity hunting everybody and they end up working together somehow, some way or some shit like that. But I just felt like this film could have really just not have an unnecessary conflict with these characters. It didn't seem necessary, honestly. And if they wanted to bring them, I felt like they could have found another way to bring these characters into the fold of the movie. But beyond that, I just felt like these characters were very unnecessary. They shouldn't have been in the film. It probably should have just been kept to like Ben, Priya, and Will. And maybe just bring a lot of conflict between Ben and Priya and put Will in the middle of it. Because Will was more of the comic relief. Like, that's probably one character that I actually really liked was Will. And it was because he was very funny. And he usually said funny shit like, well, I don't want a hick telling me I got a pretty mouth. <laughs> and also, he had another funny um, tagline when they were bringing down, like, the fish that was literally thrown up into the trees and all that. He said, like, well, I hope that I want to keep my butt in impenetrable mystery. <laughs> that one was also very funny, and it was very time right. So Will was actually one character that was really funny. But as far as these hicks in the movie, they were very fucking unnecessary. And the swag man, let me not get on the swag man. Well, actually, I do have to get on the swag man because he was definitely probably the one the worst executed villains in this film because it was like what the fuck is this guy anyway is he human is he a cannibal is he a ghost is he what the fuck is he <laughs> like he's a dead man that could alter his alter an environment causing people to either feel like they're walking in circles and he could cause them to hallucinate and see things that aren't there. But yet, in order for him to find these people, he could only hunt them using his senses. Which is usually like smell and hearing. Now to me, if he's a ghost and he could alter everything around him like he's fucking Swamp Thing and what have you. Why the fuck is he like needing to find people using his senses. Couldn't he just appear and disappear and reappear wherever the fuck they are? Kind of like Jason, how he just appears and reappears. No, appear and disappear and then reappears in front of like wherever the fucking person is at. And I feel like with this character, they just really poorly did not think about how were they going to make this guy a villain. I think they were trying to make something kind of like with Art the Clown. 
Now, Art the Clown, even though as absurd as he is, he's understandable. He makes sense to me in my head. As far as the swag man, he makes no damn sense at all in my head. I'm just like, what the fuck is this guy? Is wh What is he? Like, is he human? Is he a monster? Like, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, to me, honestly, it didn't make sense at all. Um, I really did not like the characters. And like I mentioned before, the lines... The, the dialogue in this film and sometimes the way they were talking about things was not really clear and it didn't make sense and it just seemed like we were just like bombarded into too much of the story that just was not the best and it wasn't executed right but enough about things that I hated from this film the things that I could really say that I do like about this film is definitely the cinematography and the aesthetics of the film. Just basically on how everything was pretty much shot and pretty much cut. I mean, when we get the whole first death scene that is very gruesome in the film, um, where we see Ben getting cut by the swagman who pretty much cuts, cuts Ben open and eats up his insides and shit like that. We, we are introduced to a host of, like, quick cuts that were really good and quick. And it just gives you that visceral feeling of, like, damn, this dude's getting fucked up. <laughs> Not only that, the settings and the shots were very nicely executed. And that's one thing I can really say. It was a nice shot movie. It wasn't bad. I wouldn't say it's great, but it was nice enough. I mean, you get like the shot of the trees, the tall grass, and you get to see how they move whenever like the swag man was around where you're, when you're being like bombarded by his infectious whistling and when he's trying to get control of like Priya and the other characters and what have you. What's also nice is definitely because it was shot like down south and what have you. Or probably it was, and they're trying to make it look like that. It was a nicely shot area, and it just gives you a very good aerial view shot of what of the place that they're being surrounded by. And I just really thought it was really nice to see that. Um, what's also good is that whenever like they brought in different shots of like scenes, um, they you'll be bombarded by like looks of like cells, different types of cell organisms kind of invaded in the in the movie kind of giving you like that thought of like in establishment that this movie is about scientists and whatever you not really anything special but I just thought it was really something cool but the only thing that was really um, like forgettable as far as this film was definitely the score to this movie I really can't remember what the music was but at least it wasn't terrible to say the least to where I'm just like this was a piece of shit but last but not least, I'm going to say the gore and terror of this film. I mean, there's nothing to be afraid of. So if you're somebody that is, like, afraid of, like, ghosts or some shit like this, there's nothing to be afraid of for this film because there's no real ghosts or entities running around or shit being moved like in a ghost film. If you're afraid of blood or don't like looking at like really gory films. I mean, yeah, this movie could be kind of gory because you do see the swag man pulling people's guts out and eating them. But it's not like you're being really hosted to see frontal view the guts in your face. It's more like the body is turned and you just see like him pulling out guts and shit. And you get like a close-up shot of him eating the guts and what have you. And honestly, it's not really that great. I mean, there's nothing to really be afraid of. I mean, I think also this was like one of the worst shits ever to happen. The thing is, to me, I felt like the Hicks were more terrifying than the Swag Man. Because you're hoping that these people did not get killed by these fucking rednecks and what have you. But that's just my thought about that. I mean, it's like... Why are we being bombarded with the idea of, like, all this violence and what have you, what have you? Only just to see that it ain't, it doesn't mean shit, really. <laughs>
And then the other thing that bothers me is that in this film, there's a lot of off-screen kills. And me personally, I mean, I never really paid too much attention before to off-screen kills. Because I just see, like, I'm usually counting bodies and just be like, oh, shit, that person got fucked up. But, you know, just watching more and more films, I'm I'm starting to really dislike seeing, like, people getting killed. And it's just like, oh, well, we didn't see that person getting killed, so how the fuck did they get killed? You know, we can only use our imagination. And I get sometimes using your imagination could work. Honestly, there are some types of violence you just cannot see in film, especially when it comes to, like, kids and animals you know you can't see a little kid get really fucked up in a film <laughs> even though it does sound funny and shit but yeah we can't see little kids get fucked up in a film like that there are just like sometimes too much off-screen kills and it's just like come on man can we just get like one more than one off-screen kill going on now and that's just all we really get is just an off-screen kill. And that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, that was pretty, that was just real depressing just to see like it was only one. But to render my verdict for this film, I'm going to have to bird box this shit. Listen to me. I'm only going to say this once. Under no circumstance are you allowed to take off your blindfold. Okay. Do not take your blindfolds off. Do not. And honestly, it was very obvious that I was going to say we were going to bird box this shit, but yeah, we definitely got to bird box this shit because this movie was terrible in every way, shape, or form. It was poorly executed. The story was just really not that good. Character is not really that likable, except for one, because he was fucking funny as fuck. And I mean, for a final girl, you really, or at least supposed to be a final girl, you will want to cheer for her ass and all that, but it wasn't really that great. Yeah, you definitely got a bird box of shit. But if you guys want to check out fucking the Marshes, <laughs> it is on Shutter. If you have anything that's shutter compatible or if you want to get the app itself definitely get it i am actually a big fan of shutter i have nothing negative to really say about it i'm not a fanboy or anything but yeah it is definitely very worth to get um but other than that i'm going to take a break and when i come back i am gonna do the outro wendy Stay away! darling light of my life gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. I'm gonna bash them right the fuck in. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. As you guys know, we are at the outro right now. And as you guys always know, we always have a meeting of the week and a must-watch movie of the week. So for the must-watch movie of the week, I'm going to suggest you guys High Tension, which is a movie in 2005, which stars Cecile DeFranc and Maureen Vesco. Now the premise of the story is, two female students, Marie and Alex, set off to Alex's parents' secluded house in the country to relax and study. Come nightfall, hell pulls up at the front door. Alex, bound and gagged, is taken away with Marie left eluding the intruder. Can she save her friend's life in time, or is everything all that it seems? <laughs> I know that last part was very unnecessary, but this movie is definitely really good. The plot twist is very fucking crazy. I'm just saying, like, when I first watched this film, I was interested. I was definitely very interested in how, how was Marie going to save Alex? And boy, oh boy, when you guys watch this film, if you have Amazon Prime at all, you guys definitely got to watch this film. Definitely watch it. It is definitely worth the watch. Now, for our 
meme of the week, since we didn't have one last time. I know I promised you guys two, but it looks like I'm just promising one. <laughs> but here's the meme that we're going to have for this week is with Gizmo. And I found this meme on one of my friend's page on Facebook. It was, or no, actually it wasn't Facebook. I think it was Instagram. Yeah, it was Instagram when I found it. But this meme is so fucking hilarious. So it has Gizmo in it. And it's supposed to be a me, her type of meme. So, me says, talk dirty to me with the little flirty face emoji. Her, she says, I pull my pennies to the side when I should. <laughs> Okay, let me read that over again because I can't help. I can't read this without laughing because it's so funny. But she says, I pull my panties to the side when I should. He, which is Gizmo, makes this disgusting looking face and, <laughs> and the caption reads, You need to leave. <laughs> I cannot make this shit up. So if you guys are listening to me on YouTube, or if you guys are watching it on YouTube or whatever you're doing on YouTube and you got this stuff. Yeah, look at this meme <laughs> on, on YouTube and just see how funny this shit is. Screenshot it, do whatever. Spread that shit around. <laughs> oh, man. But that is all for the show today. And sorry to say for you guys that are probably expecting me to talk about the Lakers game. are probably going to point out the Lakers if you are one of those type of assholes, but I'm pretty sure nobody's going to do that. <laughs> the Lakers did lose. They lost badly. Shit happens. I don't know what to say. But other than that, to say, please subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube. And if you guys have Spotify, definitely follow me too. Follow the podcast. Give it a listen. Whatever you guys got to do, you know, spread it around. Spread it. <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, I am signing out for today. This is your boy, Walter Doom. Out with another episode of Let's Talk About Horror. This is America. Don't let them catch you slipping now. 